Assalamu alaikum. Hey everyone and welcome back to Dubai Cash Stuffer. So today we're going to kind of talk about what is cash stuffing, who is it for, and what are the pros and cons of cash stuffing. Listen, cash stuffing is not for everyone. I'm not here to tell you it's the answer to all your budgeting and financial needs. But what I am here to say is that cash stuffing works. I have cash stuffed before. Again, it wasn't to this level in terms of the aesthetics of it all and the fancy binders. I use white envelopes, I use a pen, and I use some white paper. But it got the job done. And I can say I'm living proof that cash stuffing works because I was able to eliminate thousands of dollars in debt. And now I'm able to say that I am on a debt free journey. And now I'm on the other side trying to move forward and figure out how to go forward now that I'm debt free. So I am an advocate for cash stuffing. So what are we going to talk about first? Let's start with what makes the most sense. What is cash stuffing? Cash stuffing is a way to tangibly allocate your money to specific categories throughout the month using envelopes. You're only able to spend what you've allocated and once it's empty, you cannot spend in that category for the rest of the month. This is a way of tracking your spending and it's nothing new. Actually, I followed the Dave Ramsey method. This isn't a plug. I'm not sponsored by him, but I did follow his method. He doesn't call it cash stuffing, but it's similar in the sense that you allocate money to specific funds and you only use that. So it's nothing new. It's been done just differently. And now it's been done in different ways. Only now there are some specific resources that are dedicated to cash stuffing, which makes it a little bit more fun and entertaining and you can budget in style. So for example, we have budgeting binders. We have custom made envelopes. We have things such as savings challenges. So really cash stuffing now has made it just a little bit more appeasing for those who are starting their budgeting journey. The next thing people usually ask is, who is cash stuffing for? So cash stuffing is for several people. It's for people who want to get control of their finances. Listen, in this day and age, a lot of things are happening and money is going really quickly. And I'm finding that a lot of people that I know are saying they want to get control of their money and they want to make sure that they have for the future, for themselves and for their families. So if you want to get in control of your finances, Cash stuffing is definitely a way to do it. Cash stuffing is for people who want to eliminate debt. We live in a society where debt has become a norm. Whether it's house debt, it's car debt, it's school loans, debt is a real thing for many people. And cash stuffing is one of those ways for you to really focus on wiping out debt. Cash stuffing is for people who want to save towards a big or specific purchase. Some people want to buy a house, some people want to buy a car. Some people want to buy a very expensive purse and that means they need to save towards it. So cash stuffing is kind of a way to make sure that you know where all your money is going, you've paid all your bills, and then you could find a way to save for those big purchases later down the line. And cash stuffing is for people who want to curb sporadic and compulsive spending. If you find that you're always on Amazon, you're always purchasing something every day, you find your way into the mall or somewhere and buying things, maybe you need to start considering cash stuffing. It really is a way to stop the sporadic and compulsive spending. Next, let's look at some of the pros of cash stuffing. One of the pros of cash stuffing is that you know where every dollar is going. That is one of the main purposes of this. Every dollar has a home. Not a dirham goes unaccounted for. Another pro is that it helps you eliminate that sporadic spending and temptation I was talking about, those Amazon purchases, it eliminates that. You know how much money you have and you know what you don't have. So you know what you're able to buy and what you're not able to buy. Another pro is that it makes budgeting feel real. It's tangible, you can see it, you can feel it. And that's much easier to not spend because you see what's in front of you. Whereas when you have cards, it's easy to swipe, swipe, swipe because you don't actually see it. You don't actually feel it until you open your account, you see your statement, and then you almost have a heart attack. Another pro is that it reduces the use of debit cards and credit cards. Again, because you're accounting for every single dollar, it's important that those dollars are in front of you and that in every transaction you're using it so you can see how much you have left. When you have a debit and credit card, it's really easy for you to just swipe away and not know how much is left until it's a little too late. Another pro 
is that it is so motivating. You see money being saved right in front of your eyes and you see debts going down, down, down. If that's not motivating, I don't know what it is. When I was doing it, those were the things that satisfied me. I couldn't wait to open my binder to see how much I saved each month and what I was putting in and how much my savings was going up and how much I could challenge myself with not spending in certain categories each month. It kind of like became a game, but it was so motivating. So definitely one of the pros. Another pro is that it's a simple concept. Money goes in the envelope and once it's done, you stop spending. It's as simple as that. There are many other budgeting methods that get kind of complicated and a little stressful to manage and that's what kind of stops people from doing it. But this is as simple as it gets, guys. You avoid wasting money. Because you're accounting for every single dollar, you get to really see what are you allocating too much money for and what needs a little bit more. It helps you to see where you're wasting money. So you might realize that you are spending way too much in eating out and it helps just to reevaluate the way you're doing things. And another pro is it keeps you up to date on your bills. Because you need to know where every dollar is going and everything has to be accounted for, it requires that you know when all your bills are due so you have the money to pay the bills when they come in. And that way, you don't fall behind on any bills. Okay, so now it's time to talk about, of course, where there are pros, there are always cons. So the cons of cash stuffing. One of the cons of cash stuffing is that some people say, but you're unable to build credit. Okay, to some extent, yes, because you aren't using credit cards, which some people choose to use. I don't personally use credit cards, but that's how some people build credit. But there are many other ways you can build credit. And in some countries, you don't even need credit. Cash is king. Like where I am in Dubai, if you got the cash, you can get what you need. But I do know in places like America and Canada and the UK, you do need credit. So you can put a phone bill in your name, you can put a water bill in your name, or you can put your gas bill in your name. Some other means you can use to build credit. Another con people say is that cash cannot hold up to inflation. I can't argue that one. As we see what's happening with the cost of goods and foods, yes, the prices are going up and cash is losing its value. But remember, this isn't forever. Right now, you can only pay those debts that you have in cash, which means you need to save the cash. So in the beginning, when you're paying off debts, yes, you do need to have cash on hand. And once you eliminate them, things change. So now that I'm on the other side, I can convert them into assets that don't lose its value or don't lose as much value due to inflation. So for example, if I save enough, I can start buying gold and saving my money in gold and it won't really impact me that much because whatever I'm choosing to purchase is gonna be a big purchase that requires several years to save for. So it's not like I need the cash every few weeks and then it's gonna be an inconvenience because I have a bunch of gold now. Another con is sometimes you forget these trusty budgeting binders and then you don't have access to money. And that's the reality. It does happen. You're in a hurry, you change purses, you run out, you get to where you're and you realize I don't have the envelope for groceries. So what you can also do is you can have an allocation of a fund of just in case or some people call it emergency, whatever you want to call it, but you can allocate a little bit of extra money into your bank account and that can be used for in case you do forget your binder. And then at the end of the month, if you still have that money, you can either keep it there and roll it over or you can allocate it to a savings fund. Probably what I would do is I would take it out and put it into a savings fund. People will ask also, how do you purchase things online? Yep, this is another one of those challenges you have with cash stuffing. Because you have all your money with you in a binder, you do find times when you want to buy things online and you don't have the funds in your account because it's in your envelope. Again, you can allocate a fund where it's for online purchases and then you keep that in your bank account and then when you need to use it, you can use it. Another con is that you might end up taking several trips to the bank. I think in the beginning, it's a given. You should have that denomination sheet that kind of helps you to allocate how much of each currency that you need so that you can put it in the binder. But sometimes you miss out, you forget stuff, and you have to go back to the bank. But you shouldn't have to take so many trips to the bank. It really should be that one time at the beginning of the month. And really, if you do need change and you forgot it, I'm sure there's a local convenience store or corner store where they can give you some change. Another con is it can take time to budget. In the beginning, yes. When you're starting this journey, you really will have to sit down and face the reality of your money. You will have to look at numbers you don't want to see. You will have to play around with things and move things around. And it will take you some time. But once you get the hang of it and you know what you want and you know where you're headed, it becomes much easier and it's not as time consuming. And another con, you can lose money, but you can also lose a debit card and you can also lose a credit card. Some people think that because you have cash, you're more susceptible to losing it. 
it's the same thing as anything else. Your wallet, your keys, your phone, you have to keep it protected. Keep your binders in your purse. Don't hold it and walk around in stores because you might put it down and forget it. The cash, you might have an envelope, envelope open and it falls out. So I would say as much as you protect your car keys, protect your money and your envelopes and your budgeting binder, put it in your purse, put it away, keep it safe. So that's it guys. We learned a bit about what's cash stuffing, who is it for, the pros and the cons. Hopefully you learned something here and I've convinced you enough to start your cash stuffing journey. Keep checking in with this channel to see how my budgeting journey is going and some budgeting tips that I have for you. I'll see you all in the next video.